Welcome to another episode of Simon Says, where facts come first. I'm your host, Jenny Simon. And in the words of Laverman, more stupidness. The foot and mouth disease, the foot and mouth endemic has now become pandemic. I was awakened in the wee hours of the morning on the 14th of November, 2023, to the pinging of my phone. And it, keep, it kept on going and I'm wondering what's going on. So I got out of bed, got to my phone and I saw literally about 20, about 20 uh, videos from Facebook, Messenger, WhatsApp, coming from persons in Grenada, the US, the UK, Canada. All the same video that is captioned. Deacon, what, what did it say? What did it say? What did it Deacon Mitchell on the fire in St. Lucia. The afternoon before, I received an article from the St. Lucia Times on the same matter. What is obvious to me is that our Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell, since October 2022, when he became leader of the National Democratic Congress, the NDC, knew nothing then about the politics of Grenada, the politics of the region, not politics, period. And since then, has not learned a thing. In my last episode, I remember mentioning to you that the prime minister had four or five trips back to back, making pit stops at home. And one of these trips was a visit to St. Lucia, invited by the Prime Minister and leader of the St. Lucia Labour Party to present at the convention that was last Sunday. Who would have thought that that invite would have sparked so much controversy? Head is split. Grenada, his name is Deacon Mitchell. Deacon Mitchell, we're going to have a conversation on Grenada. All right? No, the reason for this, right, brethren, um, stay with me, is that, and uh, let's just set the, get the air clear here. The Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Mr. Pei, has a right, and the Labour Party. They have a right to invite any foreign dignitary to the country for any event. That's their right. I hope we understand that. That's their right. Just like the United Workers Party have the right to do. When they have their conventions, they can bring in um, other supporting prime ministers who can identify with their party to give them a pitch or to, you know, come and stir the crowd. But what we got on Sunday, now, Mr. Deacon, Deacon Mitchell, I had great respect for him. I look at him as a young prime minister who came from the back and really hit Grenada hard. And I wasn't paying attention to what was happening in Grenada after that. I have a lot of Grenadian friends. Um, many of them campaigned for him. Uh, many of them supported him. Many of them are Christians, and they give their full support to Mr. Mitchell um, there in Grenada at the last elections. And so I just want to set the ground, the work ground work here, that Mr. Mitchell have a right to be in St. Lucia at the invitation of the SLP. You know, they had their, their, their program yesterday, and that's their freedom, that's their prerogative. But 
there's a lot of stuff that came out of it from a foreign national, a foreign government on the soil of St. Lucia. And the brother, the Prime Minister of Grenada, made an attempt, and a very careless attempt, to disrespect the United Workers' Party and their leader. Because the reason why I say to you, the United Workers' Party and their leader, it is because the SLP are comfortable with that tone. A matter of fact, the SLP are the ones who gave him the script and said to him, this is the songbook that we are singing from. Our, 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 our talking point for this month is that Alan Shastney is a white man foreigner and we don't want him to become prime minister again. So we are going to go to the, 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 um, the, this, the house and we are going to try to mess with the, the constitution to accommodate that idea. So he got the note and he went on the platform speaking on an issue that he have no right in speaking on. I'm going to address that issue before I take you over to Grenada. And I'm going to show you that right there in Grenada, Mr. Mitchell, he has his hands full. And some of the issues he, 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 he got to deal with there in Grenada, St. Lucia has some similar issues that they too got to take care of. Huh? And it seems to me that the Labour Party, there's a pattern of behavior. A pattern of behavior. Some are more professional than some. Depend on the country and the temperament of their leader. Same issues, huh? But let me go first. Let's go first to his statement. Now, he's talking there already, and I wasn't ready for him. So let me just see if I can cue the right spot. All right, let's listen. Listen in. But every now and then, we need to give the sermon none the less. Since 1982, the St. Lucia Labour Party has had two prime ministers, one of whom is your political land. You will advance. Together, you will achieve. And together, you will ensure that it's only people who live in St. Lucia continue to run St. Lucia. Now, let's deal first of all with what he just said there, that you will ensure that people who live in St. Lucia will run St. Lucia. Let me re remind our foreign government leader, Mr. Mitchell, that we got your message clear. Don't hide behind those lawyer tactics with us by plain words. We are not dummies. Huh? In Grenada, we are not kunumunus. Yeah? So let me respond to you there, sir. Kind sir. And I'm going to ask your Grenadian people to keep you at bay and keep you under control. All right? First of all, the opposition leader, the Honorable Alan Shastney, is not a foreigner. Sir, just for your submission, is not he's not a foreigner. Two, he is from St. Lucia. He's a St. Lucian citizen. Three, he is the former prime minister of St. Lucia. Four, he is the opposition leader of St. Lucia. 
sir, just in case you were misled by Mr. Pear, I am here to tell you the truth. So I hope you can listen to me tonight. So one, there is no foreigner that have ever run St. Lucia. Check your history, Mr. Mitchell. St. Lucia have always been under the leadership. St. Lucia has always been under the leadership of a St. Lucian prime minister. No time in history have St. Lucia been led by a foreigner. St. Lucians are not stupid. That's exactly what you're insinuating here, that St. Lucians are so stupid and they're a bunch of idiots that they will allow a foreigner to get up from Canada or come from England, come to their country, run for a government, and become prime minister of the country. You are calling St. Lucian stupid, sir. That statement made no sense. Because over in Grenada, there is no foreign national that can come in and become prime minister, even though you give them free citizenship by investment, and you make millions of dollars in citizenship by investment, even though you give them. The foreigners that you're talking about, sir, free citizenship to your country, citizenship by investment, they cannot become prime ministers in St. Lucia, in, in Grenada. Huh? Yes? You understand what I'm saying? So John Compton was a St. Lucian. He was a St. Lucian citizen. The Honorable Alan Chastney is a St. Lucian citizen. St. Lucia have never been run by no foreigner. After independence. The only foreigner. That still has authority in St. Lucia. Is the king in England. He is the foreigner. And the last time I check. I believe he is still your head of state. He is the foreigner. So if you are talking about foreigner. Well go and take. Turn Grenada into a republic. Remove your foreign head. Remove your governor general. That's the only foreigner we have here. That's the only foreigner you have, Mr. Mitchell. Mr. Bright Brother. The only foreigner we have as head of state is the king in England. So don't come down to St. Lucia and peddle this foolishness and join in targeting, join in the racism from the Labour Party in St. Lucia. You join Mr. Grenada and Prime Minister, you join with that racist tone from the St. Lucia Labour Party, from Mr. Philip Jepe. He is the one who is spreading the racism at this point in the country. You, sir, joined with him in coming into a foreign country as a, 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 a foreign government, you were the only foreigner. You were the only foreigner who came on, 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 on St. Lucian territory on Sunday and insult them, sir. Go check your history, Mr. Grenadian Prime Minister. Go check your history and tell me which country in the Caribbean have a foreigner or had a foreigner, somebody who is not a national, someone who is not, have not signed their allegiance to the flag of St. Lucia, someone who do not have family heritage or background in St. Lucia, which one of them have led this country? Have, have led this country? Who? Which Jamaican national came to, to Grenada and became prime minister or came to St. Lucia and become prime minister? Which one? Which Canadian citizen came to St. Lucia and became a prime minister? Which one of them? Who? Wait, who came from the United States and became a prime minister? So let me tell you something. This garbage, 
that you are injecting into the bloodstream of St. Lucia. The racism, we need to call it what it is. The racism. And what you consider nationalism. Many countries have tried that crap. They have divided the country and they're breaking it up in pieces that they can't even manage it at this point. You are injecting racism in the bouillon of St. Lucia. And whatever you plant, sir, you will reap. Whatever you plant, sir, you will reap. And Mr. Mitchell from Grenade, Mr. Mitchell, sir, let me remind you of certain things. As a matter of fact, let me allow you to finish your statement in respect to you, and we come back. Doc. St. Lucian's clapping. Wait, 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 wait. Brethren, what you saw there, and he might, he, I mean, the man is on to something. I ain't no low IQ. And if I heard, if I was sitting there in my red shirt, and I heard a foreign government trying to insult or punch a St. Lucian national under his gut, I would not clap for that. Those people sided with a foreign government in belittling their national. That's what they did. Because Mr. Chastney ain't no Grenadian. Mr. Chastney is not from Caracou or Pitti Martinique. He's a St. Lucian. St. Lucian, sir. And the sooner the Labour Party and Mr. Pear gets it in his head that Mr. Chastney is a St. Lucian, the sooner he go to the citizenship office and check it out and verify it for himself, then it's the sooner he will get out of that mental craziness that he's in. And he will start discussing other priorities in this country, such as our rising food prices. The sooner he check on Mr. Chastney's citizenship, then he will stop this nonsense. It means that he's not too sure. You have the reins of government. You just walk over to the, 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 the immigration office or the naturalization office. It's very close to your office. Might be in the same building, I can't remember. But just go over there and ask them. Don't call. Walk over if you don't trust them. Walk over and ask them if Mr. Alan Chastney is a citizen of St. Lucia. Go and ask them when he became a citizen of St. Lucia. If it was last week, last year, or when, or before elections. Huh? And as far as I'm concerned, you're still under the Commonwealth of England. Go check your laws and you would realize that, I mean, the man, if the man is a Canadian, the man is under the Commonwealth. Why are you spewing what you're spewing? And the majority of St. Lucians are swallowing this poison, not understanding the truth. And let me tell you something. The white people helped to build St. Lucia. Their monies, the loans that we have been receiving, the loans that Prime Minister boasts about, it didn't come from Africa. Hmm? It didn't come from Grenada. Those money came from our white brothers. So I'm not sure. Boy, St. Lucia, I'm telling you, you are going down a very dark and slippery place with racism because the world right now is working on stamping racism out. Laws are being strengthened, even here in the United States, to stamp it out. Now, let me say this. Let's put this thing into perspective. I knew Alan Chastney as a teenager. He played basketball for the National St. Lucian team. He actually captained 
the team at one point. I met him when I went to St. Lucia to play netball for Green Day. I think it was on the 23 team at the time. And of course, the, the basketballers came to check out the girls, you know? And, and I remember, I, I, I mean, at least three of them, I can remember their names right now. There was Dawn Siflain, who made quite an impact on me, to say the least. And then there was um, Stanley Samuel, and there was Alan Chastney. No, who could miss Alan Chastney? He was the white one on the team, right? As, as they say now, he's white. Um, who can blame the guy for the color of his skin? His mom was Irish. His dad born and bred St. Lucian. Now that was in the 80s. And um, nice guy, nice guy. Now, they also, that team came to Grenada. I believe it was early 90s. Came to Grenada to play friendly matches with the Grenada national team at the time. And Alan Chastney then was the, the, um, the, the, the captain of the team. Now, Alan Chastney was born in Martinique, neighboring island. I mean, people go to, St. Lucians go to Martinique as they go, as we go to Cariacou, right? That's how St. Lucians go to Martinique to shop, to do different things. Now, I know these things. I lived in St. Lucia for a year. After Ivan in 2004, my daughter and I, we moved to St. Lucia. We spent a year there. I could have stayed there, but I came back. I came back to Grenada. I came back to Grenada. I just had to rub that one in. Anyway, he was born in Martinique. For medical reasons, his mom went to Martinique to have him. And after a safe birth, they went back home to St. Lucia. His parents, as I said before, his dad, born and bred St. Lucian, and his mom was Irish. He attended school in St. Lucia, the last one being the St. Mary's College, before he left for Canada to further his studies. What is the crime in that? We, as people in the Caribbean, we've been offered scholarships from the USA, the Middle East, from China, Asia, India, all over the world. Our people go to study, especially when they get a scholarship. And of course, yes, they do UWE in the Caribbean. What, what is the difference between someone going to Canada to study or the UK or UWE? What, 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 we're so proud. I've never left the Caribbean to study. I went to UWE and I came right back to Grenada. Well, he went to Canada and went right back to St. Lucia, right? Alan Chastney was director of tourism in St. Lucia at one point. He was a member of the Senate. He was minister of tourism in the John Compton's cabinet. He was MP twice, member of parliament twice, once as prime minister and now as opposition leader. How is he not St. Luciana? How? Him and his dad, him, like his dad, I should say, invested in St. Lucia and St. Lucians, giving them job and jobs and opportunities. No, 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 no. Listen to this. That's Alan Chastner there in a bucket. John Compton was born in Kanoan, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines on the 29th of April, 1925. And in September, 1939, he was taken to St. Lucia. He was 14 years old. I hope most of you know who John Compton was. John Compton became the first prime minister of independent St. Lucia. But before that, under the British, he 
from 1964 to 1979, the year of the independence, he was what they used to call, I think, premier of St. Lucia. That is 15 years before the independence. He served as what you can call prime minister, premier, whatever you want to call it. Right? He served as prime minister after the independence three times. Briefly in 1979, after the then independence on the 22nd of February, and again from 1982 to 1996, three consecutive terms. And then again from 2006 to 2007, at the age of 82 years old, when he died in 2007. St. Lucia has two national heroes, George F.C. Charles and John G.M. Compton. Remember, he was born in Kanawan, right? And left Kanawan at the age of 14. Chastney was born in Martinique and probably left there a week old, if so much, and back to St. Lucia. No, St. Lucia don't have a hero's day, in case you're wondering, they don't, they don't have a hero's day. Imagine that, and, and, and John Compton, look at the amount of years he served as prime minister of St. Lucia. Nobody said he was not a St. Lucian and that he shouldn't be in, in the parliament and, and rah, 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 rah. But all of a sudden, a Johnny come lately, gone in the people country and want to tell them who is citizen or not and who should be put in office or not. Suggesting that Alan Chesney is not a St. Lucian and doesn't live in St. Lucia. Now, how could he be the head of the St. Lucia, um, the, 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 what's the name of the party? How could he be the leader of the opposition and don't live in St. Lucia? As suggested by Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell. The irony of this is that former Prime Minister of Grenada, Maurice Bishop, whom Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell idolizes, he, he, he moving like him these days. He, he, he not writing speeches no more. He's speaking from his head. He's Maurice Bishop reincarnated. If you're right, you'll do better right write your speeches. Maurice Bishop came to Grenada at the age of six. He was born in Aruba. He was born in Aruba. His family, his parents, and his two sisters, older sisters, came to Grenada in 1950 when Maurice was six years old. He went to school in Grenada attended the Presentation Brothers College before he left for the UK. Alan went to Canada, Morris went to the UK before he left for the UK to further his studies. Came back in Grenada, came back to Grenada in 1970, married with children was the leader of the NJM and subsequently the, the, after the revolution, the People's Revolutionary Government. He spent 11 years roughly in the UK before he came back to Grenada. Oh, but we love Maurice and Maurice and Maurice and Maurice. Right here in Grenada, but you've gone in the people country with your arrogance. Bad boy, bright boy, 
And you could say what you want. You don't have to follow the laws of Grenada, much less you want to go into St. Lucia and do the same yeah. thing. Because when you left Grenada on Sunday for St. Lucia, who was the Prime Minister? There was no announcement of who was the Prime Minister. There was, it wasn't gazetted. Who was our Prime Minister when you left for St. Lucia on, on Sunday? Today, the, the administration of Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell stopped short of naming October 19th holiday the Morris Bishop Day. Instead, they called it Heroes Day and centered the entire commemoration around his name. Everything was Morris. All who spoke spoke about Morris. Nobody else existed. Nothing, not, nobody else. And went to St. Lucia to tell St. Lucians that Alan Chastney is not living in St. Lucia and should not be voted in to office. As a leader and prime minister, Prime Minister Mitchell has no right getting involved in the party politics of another country in the domestic politics of another country. What if Alan Chastney became the next prime minister of St. Lucia in the next election? I think which is due in another two years. What if, if it's not called before? Because at the rate things go in with all the campaigning and, and, and all this fright that Alan Chastney might come back, it seems as though Philip Draper might call an early election. But if they go down to the wire, it's in the next two years. What if Alan Chastney became or becomes the prime minister? What would you do, Deacon Mitchell, when you have to sit around a table? How would you feel? Leaders of parties and prime ministers, and even in some cases, parliamentarians, ministers of government do not get involved in that type of politics in another country. Because you just never know. You just never know. Ralph Gonzalez was invited to speak at that convention as well. He didn't go in person, but he sent his regards. He sent his presentation. And it had nothing to do with the party politics in St. Lucia. Wise man, what you need to do is learn from these wise people. But the more I ask, who advises the Prime Minister? Who advises Honorable Deacon Mitchell? What I hear is, he don't take advice. You can't tell him what to do. He don't listen. Because you're the bright boy and you know everything. What you don't know is that you don't know. And the people around you, which is sad, they don't know either. So they can't help you. So all, all you're going over the precipice in a barrel together. Let's hear another clip. I want to tell you a little story. I could have lived in Canada too, you know. Okay. So he's jabbing at Mr. Chastney. Somebody told him Chastney was living in Canada. Do you know the amount of Grenadians in Canada and the United States? They should be embarrassed and ashamed of statements from this prime minister jabbing at an opposition leader and he's on foreign soil. And I don't know why the people are not outraged about this. I don't know why St. Lucians are not saying, boy, stop that. What are you doing? You are speaking about a St. Lucian national, whether the man lives in Canada, England, America, whatever it is. All of you have children and jabal overseas in different countries. Your shirt came from a foreign country. The monies that you kissing up these foreign nationals for came from up there. The last time I saw you overseas in a foreign land, a white coal land, begging for money. And now you're jabbing. You only go to these countries, Canada and America, to beg for money. 
but you're jabbing at one of our St. Lucian National. One of our St. Lucian National who you should be respecting as the opposition leader of the country because Mr. Shaston will not go to Grenada and embarrass your opposition leader there. No, he's more classy than that. He has respect. Your behavior says unbecoming. Arrogant and rude and pompous. Disrespecting a man and laughing about Canada. What's wrong with Canada? I live in the United States. There are solutions spread all over the United States and Canada and England. Half of your people in England and Canada. But oh, you could have lived in Canada. You could have lived in Canada. And what, what's the meaning of you could have lived in Canada? What's that? What are you saying? You fellas. Talk. But I chose Grenada. My mother was living in Canada. In fact, I have a brother living there still. But I chose Grenada. So I want all... Right. Alan Shastner chose St. Lucia. He lives in St. Lucia. Joe St. Lucia, he went, he got his education, he gets some exposure out there to come back and help to run the country. And we, I wish that more St. Lucians would go overseas and learn how to run a country because what we're seeing there is a bunch of garbage. Go and get yourself exposed to the real world, how things happen. Go spend six months, two years, five years and see how the real world function. And tell me which country that you will go to a well-developed country that runs like a good, well-oiled machine. Which country in the world that you go to and see what you fellas are doing in the Caribbean, going on another man's territory and talk foolishness? Which country you can go and do that crap? Go to Russia and try it. Try going to Russia. And try go up to Africa and some of those nations and do that nonsense up there. And it's common courtesy that when you come on somebody's soil, that you exercise caution as a prime minister. You not know anybody. You exercise caution. You have some etiquette, some manners. And I hope the opposition leader write a letter to you. And I hope the opposition in Grenada stand up and condemn this racist agenda that you have joined onto, you have signed on to. Now, what if Alan Chasney is a citizen of Canada and St. Lucia, the, the dual citizenship? Canada is a Commonwealth country. Grenada is a Commonwealth country. St. Lucia is a Commonwealth country. And it's a okay. I don't know how many of you used to follow the politics how long ago, but we had an issue going into the 2008 elections when Peter David was accused of being a Canadian citizenship by the prime minister then, Dr. Mitchell, Dr. Keith Mitchell and the NNP and went to court even. But Peter David being a citizen of a common, another commonwealth country. According to the constitution, it's okay. You can't be a US citizen and be a leader or, or put yourself up for office in, a, in, in, in Grenada or in St. Lucia. Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell, you and your administration and party often speaks of the 16th constituency, the diaspora. Everything for all is the diaspora. All the gallerying, all the doing, all partying, having a good time in the diaspora. Every minute you turn around is a gala, right? It's okay to go to the galas and collect the money, the bag of money and come back. So speaking of which, I hear some money's missing from the last gala in the UK, big article written. 
Some members want to know where the money gone. I didn't make it up. It's published. I have a copy of it. And not time for that today. We're dealing with Alan Sashne. Right? So the diaspora, the diaspora, or Grenadians in the diaspora, some of them are not even, wasn't even born in Grenada, but they are of Grenadian parentage. So we're glad to go and lap up their monies and beg them and bring them back. We, these islands, are the ones who selling our passports to foreigners, to Asians, to Indians, to Russians, white people. Some of them never touch the soil of our country and we call them citizens. And if they come here and stay for the stipulated time, they can vote. I've been in line to vote and hear people speaking. I don't even know what language it is. They're in front of me because there are citizens of Grenada and the man in your own country and you gone there trying to tell the people the man is not St. Lucia. No, I don't know if you could get any worse than that. And what is your point when you're saying you could live in Canada, but you came back to Grenada? Every, so many people are here in Grenada that could have been somewhere else. I lived in the US, I could have been there. But does that make you any more patriotic than a Grenadian who went abroad, studied and come back? Does that make you any more a people person and love your country? No, Mr. Prime Minister, because we don't know you before this, before October, 2022. We never see you in the stadium or in the Queen's Park, sit down in an in, in a, in a independent celebration, watching the parade. When did you become a card-bearing member of the NDC? Or have you been a card-bearing member of any other political party in Grenada before October 2022? Just what, a couple of years ago? Not even. Almost. Yeah, just gone. Yeah, October. That does not make you a citizen and, 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 and or, 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 or a patriotic Grenadian, so to speak. You could have lived in Canada, but you chose Grenada. Nonsense, utter nonsense. That has nothing to do with the narrative, nothing to do with it at all. Let's hear more of you. And the prime and this prime minister of Grenada gave us an example. You all were clapping, clapping at your own self. A foreign, a foreign, the same foreigner that you talk about. A foreign government. That's what it is. A foreign government shows up on foreign soil. Tom and Jerry. Let's listen to Tom. When the time comes, make sure that it's St. Lucian's who you're putting into office. And you know St. Lucian's clap. Listen, watch. Look who's clapping. Look. Make sure that it's Look at the smile. Ooh, Mr. Pear. Like look, look at that. You see how nice Mr. Pear look there smiling. Ooh. Clapping at garbage. Look at Musa face shining with coconut oil. Look at it. Look at them. Oh, look at Mr. Prime Minister face. Oh, that is the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. Mama. How do you go to St. Lucia and lap up what you were told without knowing the truth? How, 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 how could you? How could you, Mr. Prime Minister? And then turn and embarrass us as a nation. You continue to put your foot in your mouth. Like buying two airplanes, if they still have issues with Leah, you could just buy two airplanes for Grenada and fly from Grenada to Barbados and Grenada to Trinidad. Then you come with another story when you realize you can buy no plane to start with anyway. Forget that. Like getting rid of contract work in six months by the stroke of a pen or immediately after the election. By the stroke of a pen, 
by trapping the sargassum seaweed outside on the horizon before it get to our shores. Like putting healthcare on the front burner and more and more, I could continue. But we're not here for that today. So we're moving on. Folks, being a bright boy doesn't mean it works all the time. No, you could write your attorney at law, very brilliant out here in your field. But when it comes to politics, you don't even need to be bright academically to be a politician, a real politician. And common sense does come in good sometimes. You know, use a little common sense to know that that's not the right thing to say on that podium. You and Philip J. Peck could go and have a drink by the bar and sit down and laugh and knock glass and say that kind of crap, just between the two of y'all. But you don't go in the public, in the, the, this age of computer, of, 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 of social media, and say things like that. Most leaders turn down, actually turn down these offers, leaders, MPs, and sometimes they send somebody from their party. It's a party event, like a nice, strong youth they send to speak on the behalf of their party for the sad reason of getting tied up in the party. Because they all know that we never know. We never know who is going to win an election and when. You didn't know, you didn't think you were going to win the last election. How many of you remember Mia Motley at the invitation of the NNP in February, I think it was of 2022, came here to speak at their convention. This lady spoke about Barbados. She spoke of the countries, the, the underpopulated countries of the Caribbean. She started to, to she speak of climate change. She speak of the pandemic. She speak of um, non-communicable diseases like diabetes and hypertension. She spoke among other things of global instability and it effects on small island states. But she was cautious not to get into the domestic politics of Grenada. And true then, in fact, NMP lost the election. So she would have had to deal with you, Deacon Mitchell, if she had gone in there and said things about you. But let's listen to a, a snippet of, of, of Mia, Prime Minister Mia Motley. She spoke for 45 minutes, 45 minutes, and was careful not to get into the domestic politics of Grenada. By three, before, you might get an unlucky, unlucky blow, but chances are most of the time you're going to survive. But when you get shot with automatic weapons, with bullets coming at you, like rain falling on the ground, chances are you're not going to make it. So that when you combine the existing problems that we had before, and I add to that the very real issue, that when these countries became independent, they were told goodbye and good luck. There was no development compact. There was no package given to us at independence as was given to the slave owners upon emancipation. There was nothing. And therefore, we've had, in spite of the fact that wealth was extracted from our countries for decades and centuries, we had to go and find on our own how to start off the day after independence. My friends, our region is at a particularly difficult moment. And we've said to our people that what we do in the next 10 to 15 years in this Caribbean community will determine how we survive and if we survive. And I say so conscious that at the beginning of what I said to you, a hundred years ago, there were no small island developing states. 
we were bold enough in the period after independence to say we can do it and thus far we've done well but we did well when the world was relatively peaceful and relatively prosperous the world has now changed gear and is mirroring that instability that the world saw between 1910 and 1945. Can you imagine for my grandmother born in 1906, she would not have lived in a world that would have known relative stability and peace until she was a woman in her 40s. Until she was a woman in her 40s. Because that is what being born in the early part of the 20th century meant. Similarly, those who are being born now or who are born a decade ago will not appreciate the relative calm and prosperity that we knew in the early years of independence. I will now live in a world where whether it is in our part of the world or far afield, people feel free to interfere into other people's business and to make judgments and to make determinations as to who can lead and who shall live and who shall not live. And that is why we speak today about friends of all and satellites of none and principle meaning something. Because in the same way that we stood up as Caribbean people to protect the right of Venezuelan people not to have people interfere in their matters and to appoint a president who was not elected by the people of Venezuela, we stand up today equally to say that the people of Ukraine have a right to self-determination without the interference of others. And the principles that obtained in Venezuela two years ago are the same principles that obtain in the Ukraine today. And it is perhaps appropriate that I speak on these matters from Grenada. Because more than any other country in the Eastern and Southern Caribbean, you too know that the days of the Caribbean Sea being the staging ground for the conflict between great imperial powers needed to have come to an end and must not be allowed to be resurrected at all because the Caribbean Sea must remain a zone of peace for Caribbean people. And whether it is imperialist from the West imperialists from the east, imperialists from the north, imperialists from the south, the Caribbean Sea must remain a zone of peace for Caribbean people. We have had too much conflict and too many Caribbean people die over centuries because of the battles fought in this sea. And I trust and pray that we will be able with a single voice to speak to these issues because our people need it and depend on us to ensure that we can create that ring fence, that cocoon that protects our people who for centuries have just had too much of being collateral damage for the benefit of other people's prosperity and ambitions. How would you have felt, Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell, if Mia Motley, had told the NNP delegates and Grenadians, make sure they don't vote for an inexperienced, non-political upstart and his all inexperienced team who do not know they're from the elbow. In comparison to this, let's hear you. That has been confined to the opposition bench for almost quarter century. And by the looks of things, it might be another quarter century. So I'm saying, I know I am preaching to the converted. But every now and then we need to give the sermon none the less. Since 1982, the St. Lucia Labour Party has had two prime ministers, one of whom 
is your political leader and the current Prime Minister of St. Lucia. So I want you to appreciate that there will be no successful party without a successful Prime Minister. There will be no successful government without a successful Prime Minister. So just like I know, as in Grenada, my party learned the lessons the very hard way. I know no lesson. you have learned the lessons the very hard way as well. And so when we talk about moving forward together, it is the together that you have to underline and circle. It is the unity that you have to underline and circle. Because there could only be one prime minister. There could only be one finance minister, one health minister, one infrastructure minister. So we do not need to fight for something that we want to do. We need to remember that each of us, members, supporters, delegates, friends, and the Labour Party have our individual role to play. So I know, you know, as Comrade Gonzalez said, what it is to be in opposition. So you see what them fellas are afraid of is being in opposition. <laughs> so all that noise is for them not to be in opposition. But if you all don't want to be in opposition, you know, you all are keeping the wrong set of noise. If you don't want to be in opposition, I mean you work for the citizens of this country. <laughs> All you realize, they flush the toilet on the Prime Minister. First he talking. Prime Minister. Prime Minister. You are not in your section. Stay in your lane. This was very upsetting to a cross section of St. Lucians, especially this podcaster here, um, Pastor Garfield Oliver and his followers, and of course, members of the St. Lucian opposition, the United Workers Party, UWP, led by Alan Chastney. I humbly agreed with Pastor uh, um, Oliver when he said that the motive behind most of these po politicians in office is to stay in office, to remain in office. They, in my opinion, they don't care about us. Putting people first has become a cliche. Everybody putting people first, putting, putting themselves first is what happens. And so in my mind, here in Grenada, I believe these upstarts, some of whom are enjoying their first and only job is to get back into office for a second term. And why? To get pension and gratuity. The same pension and gratuity that they condemned decades ago. And I mean decades ago. Because the first, um, the NDC of 20, 2008 to 2013, had a chance to repeal that act, but they didn't. Mr. Integrity and in them? No, because some of them, most of them, were on the second term in the Parliament of Grenada, and they were going to be eligible for that, that pension and gratuity. So they hush courts, they don't say a word. They just go through and now they're enjoying the pension and the gratuity that they were cursing NNP for putting into effect, saying they want a private pocket and imagine you're going for two terms and you're getting your pension and blah, 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 blah. How much times are they going now to get it? How much are they sitting crossing all the legs and re receiving it? And the next batch come together, they have the chance. Where is Cynthia Dutton? 
I see us swinging from a pole on the car and talking crap about putting lights on bus stop. We don't have night traffic. You didn't learn lessons from Andy putting lights on and, and, and bus stop in the lagoon and in Granans. Where them lights? The people take the lights. They ride because we don't need lights on no bus stop. Nobody does be on the bus stop in the night. They need the lights. Some of them need the lights in their home. They don't have electricity. So they take it. Swinging from a pole on the carnage, talking crap about the prime minister didn't say um, he's not a citizen. He didn't say he's not living there. Well, some kind of crap. Stop defending the defendant. Take your heads out of the sand, you know? And, and, and speak out and speak up against these things, the arrogance of, of, of these, of all of y'all, all of y'all. Well, I don't expect you to speak up, Claudia, but stay quiet. Stay quiet. This bunch today, all oh, let's speak about this 2027. Remember I showed you the clip when the minister of health supposed to go and speak of health in a tongue on meeting. What did he do? Speak about 2027 and getting Kareen James back to office in 2027. We have to stop this and stop it fast. We are going to hell in a handbasket. And we grinning and we clapping. You see Tevin almost falling out of his chair and sitting in the front in, in St. Lucia there in the convention. And the executive secretary, is she hired by the government of Grenada or the NDC party? You, you have, we have problem in figuring out when it's a political thing and when it's a government thing, because the same grouping, Orlando, he was there, the same grouping travel all the time. In an article written in the St. Lucian Times, and I quote from Mr. Chastney saying, he sees himself as a St. Lucian who is not better than anyone. I don't see myself as white people. You cannot blame the man for the color of his skin. When did we get to that point? He said, I see myself as a St. Lucia who is willing to do anything that anybody else is willing to do. Tell the Prime Minister of Grenada, coming out with racism, with a racism speech first, I would tell him, mind his business. Our country has, is divided, has divided us badly. I am ashamed to say I am St. Lucia. Out of order, I am, he's out of order. I am very disappointed in him, referring to our now infamous Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell. I'll now leave you with this clip. Just one of the boulders pelted back at us here in Grenada. Bet! Même pour la neuf, si vous jouez avec Tichin ou Kai Henflis. Where? Go deal with you all. Similar problems. So the woman get bitten by a mongoose. The woman get bitten by a mongoose in Grenada. Not a snake, you know. A mongoose, sweet moon, come out here to part to Grenada. And she goes to the hospital in St. George's at the health clinic. And there is no medication for her. Sounds like a similar problem in St. Lucia. Don't let no mongoose bite you, Mr. Mitchell, in Grenada, because they don't have medication in St. Lucia, too. <laughs> no, that's not fiction. Eh? I knew about that. That's a fact. That's not fiction. That's a fact. Folks, as we wrap up, is it true the airport authority has hired a new manager, a manager, Edgar Stephen, a St. Lucian, paying him a whopping salary of $32,000 a month plus housing and transportation. Is it true that the NDC activist Kim Jones got his visa through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs? 
And is it true he might be holding an official passport? Folks, I need to draw attention to one thing before I leave. I saw in the news, the, the Northeast constituency, they proud and they're moving along, they come out first. That's the, the committee to uh, of the celebrations, of the 58 celebrations, anniversary. And a group of senior citizens, not one youth or young person, the youngest person on there, is an old school mate of mine. We were not in the same form, but we were at the convent at the same time. She has to be between 58, 59, thereabout. Then that's Miss Nola Bartholomew. Then there was Dr. Sonia Nixon, who is way up in her 60s, going towards 70. Mr. Hugh Dolan, who is in his 70s. Mr. Roy O'Neill, who is in his 70s. Mr. Derek James, who I believe is in his 70s or very close to 70. And Mr. Raymond, Julian, Uncle Raymond. Uncle Raymond is 78. Russian to 80. That, my friend, is what you call youth for change. Folks, that's a wrap on today's episode of Simon Says. Always a pleasure conversing with you, keeping them honest. Thank you for joining me again today on Simon Says, where facts come first. See you next week, same time, same place. Have a wonderful week. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to Simon Says. To ensure that you never miss an episode, click subscribe and make sure to turn on the notifications by clicking on the notification bell icon. See you at the next episode.